Everybody, <clears throat> welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about sleep. Where we talk about sleep. The book that started this all. Um, <clears throat> welcome back, everyone. Thank you for watching. Today, I wanted to uh, talk about my my area of research, which is known as REM behavior disorder, and why we care about it in the sleep world. So. From previous videos, I talked about what happens in REM sleep. Now, REM sleep or REM sleep, what occurs is the body is naturally paralyzed, head to toe, right? So if you watch somebody when they're sleeping, uh, I know it's a little creepy to do this, but if you watch somebody when they're sleeping and their eyes are closed, you'll see the eyes, eventually you'll see the eyes dart underneath the eyelids uh, while the person's asleep. Um, what's happening in REM sleep, REM sleep, is about every 90 minutes or so, as our brain cycles through the various stages of sleep, we end with a period of REM. That's why people say we have a 90 minute sleep cycles. It's for this reason. So what happens is, we go through all our stages of sleep, we end with a period of REM, and then the cycle begins again, and we have four or five of these over the course of a normal night. All right, so what happens is REM sleep, it, it, our body is paralyzed, our eyes move, our diaphragm moves, which allows us to breathe and remain alive. Um, but for the most part, though, uh, there's one other muscle uh, in the inner ear which works. But for the most part, every other muscle is paralyzed. Okay. So, you know, I like to talk about evolution and sleep uh, on this channel. And uh, if you think about it from an evolutionary standpoint, right, if you've got primitive man and, um, you know, we dream throughout the night, but the dreams in REM sleep tend to be very action-oriented, right? So imagine you got, you got primitive man, and he's up on a mountain somewhere, let's say, and uh, he's taking a little nap, and he's on the edge of a cliff, for example. And uh, let's say during this sleep, during this nap, uh, he, uh, he starts dreaming, and he dreams that he's fighting something off, or fighting a, an animal off or so, right? Now... If he were to act out that dream or even act out part of that dream, right? So where he swung his arm or kicked his leg or did something like that uh, and fell off said cliff, uh, what would happen? He would die, right? So evolution kind of weeded that out of us. So therefore, during REM sleep, during these action-oriented or uh, emotionally charged dreams, our body is paralyzed. Okay. Now, REM behavior disorder... What that is, is just what it sounds like. So what happens is instead of these people being paralyzed head to toe, what happens is they're actually allowed to, or their brain is allowed to act out those dreams. So there's an area in the brainstem right here where my, where my finger is called the pons. And what happens is the pons normally shuts off the, the gate, if you will, or closes the gate from the brain all the way down to the spinal cord. So what happens is when somebody normally goes into REM sleep, the area of the pons activates and it prevents those signals coming from up here to get down to our muscles. Therefore, we're paralyzed. In REM behavior disorder, this, this is allowed, this, this signal is allowed to pass down. So people will, uh, the kind of classic story is the older gentleman coming in with his wife and the wife has a, has a huge black eye because he had a dream that he was boxing somebody in his sleep and he actually hit his wife in that, in that way. Um, so why do we, you know, why, why would the field care so much about this? Well, obviously, you know, the person could hurt themselves, right? If they uh, break their hand on the wall or fall out of bed, which we see sometimes, or hurt their bed partner. I mean, you know, you see, you see these things every now and then. Sure, we, I mean, that, that's important. But the real reason we care about this is not, is not because of that. The real reason we care about this, sorry, some noise outside. The reason we, we care about this is because of the link to Parkinson's disease. So what's been shown in the medical literature is Parkinson's disease, this other condition known as dementia with Lewy body or Lewy body dementia and multiple system atrophy. These three disorders are characterized under one umbrella called uh, disorders of alpha synuclein. I'll talk about that in another, in another video. Um, where basically abnormal uh, uh, deposits or abnormal collections of this, this protein called syn alpha synuclein build up in the brain. Um, but for, for, the, for the purposes of this video, we'll just say Parkinson's disease. So there's a link in the medical literature between somebody having REM behavior disorder 
and developing Parkinson's disease about 10 years later. Now, the medical literature is pretty harrowing in terms of the percentage, so it's up, upwards of 70% of people who have this condition will develop this, this, uh, this horrible, horrible disease. Now, what I tell all my patients is if I diagnose them with REM behavior disorder, is to really try not to lean, not try not to read the the internet and other things out there because the medical literature I think is wrong, and here's why. It's very possible that there is actually a lot more people than we realize have this condition, but they just never go see a doctor, right? So if somebody has REM behavior disorder and it's so bad that their bed partner gets hurt, of course they'll go see a doctor. But what if a person lives alone, or what if their um, their dream enactment? is not very uh, profound, right? What if it's a, I don't know, uh, an old lady imagining she's, or dreaming she's picking flowers, you know, that that probably would not warrant a doctor's attention. So so I think, you know, and this is not proven, but this is what I think, is that, that RBD or REM behavior disorder is much more common than we realize. Therefore, the the likelihood of somebody developing Parkinson's disease is actually a lot lower than what we than what we know. But that's 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 my own take on this. Anyway, my area of research is, is looking into that, that connection between REM behavior disorder and Parkinson's disease. And um, while there's a lot of literature coming out about it, we still don't really understand why that is and, and where Parkinson's disease fully comes from, where RBD fully comes from, and what the linkage is there. But, uh, but rest assured, people like the, or the or foundations like the Michael J. Fox Foundation are starting to look at REM behavior disorder for this reason. Now, what would be great in the future is this, because REM behavior disorder is one of the first symptoms of something like Parkinson's disease coming down the road, eventually what will happen is in science, in neurologic science, we will have what we call neuroprotective agents. So, for example, if somebody comes to me and we diagnose them with REM behavior disorder, which would include a sleep test and, and a clinical uh, history and examination, uh, I could put them on a neuroprotective agent, I or any, anyone could put them on a neuroprotective agent and say, okay, look, we've studied this compound, you know, whatever it is, take this, and by doing so, you're gonna reduce the likelihood of you developing Parkinson's disease by 50% or, or even higher or whatever it is. How amazing would that be, right? How life-changing would that be? So that's where the field is headed towards. Um, and neuroprotective agents will be used for things like this, but also for stroke or, various other conditions. So hopefully uh, this, this occurs and you know, we find something in the next, um, you know, next few decades uh, would, be, would be fantastic. So, uh, so anyway, that's what, that's what folks like myself are, are, are focused on. And um, you know, this is really one of the, of the links where, where uh, that overlap between sleep disorders and neurology can really, can really make, a, make a difference. So, uh, if you have somebody who you think may have REM behavior disorder, just like I tell with all the conditions we talk about, you got to go have them see a doctor, right, and have them do a sleep test. And, um, you know, there, there are things that people can do that look like REM behavior disorder but are not. But the only way to fully diagnose it, is, as I said, is with a, with a clinical history, examination, and, uh, and a sleep test. Okay? So, anyway, I know it's kind of a morbid topic, but, you know, I, I think that, that it's uh, definitely worth it to be positive about this because uh, I think down the road we will have some really some some great breakthroughs so here's to hoping um thanks for watching this video please share it with your friends and family especially if somebody may have run behavior disorder uh or has been diagnosed with uh please like this video please subscribe to the channel if you have questions about run behavior disorder or anything else please leave them in the comment section I will answer all of them and um the paperback version of my book let's talk about sleep here, let's talk about sleep, uh, is coming out in, in May of 2019. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, folks, until then, sleep well.